I'd like to thank you, Prime Minister, for agreeing to open the extended and refurbished courthouse here in Tavioni. It is clear you have had a very full programme in the last two weeks in the Northern Division. I know you've been opening new premises, inspecting facilities, checking on services, and ensuring that what was applied for or promised was indeed delivered. Throughout your leadership as Prime Minister, you have demonstrated a commitment to helping the rural areas, the islands, and the formerly neglected Northern Division. So particularly now, the fruits of that concern and investment are obvious to all. The upgrading of this small courthouse is such an example. People in rural areas matter, and they deserve more and more of the services expected in Suva Nandi or Latoka. In the Judicial Department, we realize there is much more to do, and that in time we may put a courthouse or two in the Lao Group, one at Jokheti, and a High Court at Sao Sao. I was last in Tavuni in 1985. The Great Council of Chiefs building was being constructed then. I visited, as Acting Chief Registrar, especially to hear some old civil cases. I think you might say they're still old. We must do something about that. The cases were heard in the former building. In those days, the ceiling of the courthouse was equipped with a punka. I think we could do with one today. The punka operated like a fan by being tweaked by a rope attached at one end to the punka and at the other to the big toe of one of the prisoners. The last case went on till after 7 p.m. The evidence had to be heard and the judgment delivered prior to my returning to Suva the next day. I remember it was exceedingly hot and stuffy. We thought we were going to have an earthquake. Certainly there were tremors. Occasionally, the punker waller dozed off, and the orderly had to remind him to keep tweaking the rope. <laughs> Fortunately, we got to the end of the case in the heat without the parties coming to blows. How times have changed. There were no tar sealed roads then, and very few cars or commercial vehicles. With the development of infrastructure by government, the people now, whether farmers, traders, or hoteliers, can grow their businesses. The upgrading of this courthouse demonstrates the commitment of the judiciary, backed by government, to ensure better facilities and faster access to justice. There are a few more things we wish to do to the building, but what we have now is a substantial improvement in its capacity to serve the people of Tavioni. <coughs> I'd like to pay tribute to the designers and work team for this project. I thank Mr. Daniel Kim, sitting in front here, and his construction team of Grace Road Group, the builders. From the government architect section, I thank Mr. Len McComba and Mr. Salosi Kandi, who were meant to be with us today, couldn't get here. They're too busy in doing their government architect's work. And I thank Mr. Robin Palmer, our consultant, for the original scope of work. Getting the right balance of increase in facilities and quality of facilities for use by the public, paying attention to the real needs of visitors and users of the courthouse, whilst ensuring that taxpayers' money is not wasted, is essential. I'd also like to thank uh, not only the Chief Registrar for giving this direction and uh, enthusiastic uh, support, but also Mr. George Chand, our Assets Manager, and to his team, both from Suva and from Lombasa and the Courthouse staff.
preparing the building for this opening and uh, the facilities you see today. I thank, as others will do too, all of the government servants on Tavioni for the generosity of spirit in lending and sharing their spaces whilst the works proceeded and when we had no proper home. Such genuine cooperation for the sake of completing the works whilst the court service continued, uninterrupted, is the right spirit for a nation's advancement and prosperity, as well as for the success of the Olympics. Finally, we must remember too the need, along with those infrastructure improvements, for higher professional and ethical standards. Court staff must be on guard to give confidence to the public who will scrutinize whether the court is a place of impartiality. No litigant, prosecutor, or accused is to be favored. There should be no cronyism, no conflicts of interest. Your relationships should be ethical, professional, and impartial, with no favorites and no enemies. I wish you all well for the use of the new courthouse. Thank you. The Honorable uh, Chief Justice, the Chief Registrar. <coughs> Honorable Ministers, Grand Tantal, Commissioner Norman, Commissioner of uh, Police. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good luck and a very good afternoon to you all. I'm honored to be here today to officiate at the opening of the Tabuni Courthouse. Thank you for the warm uh, welcome. Today marks another significant milestone achievement of my government in fulfilling that promise to bring better infrastructure and facilities to every Fijian, regardless of your location. The judiciary is a separate and independent arm of the government. It uh, interprets the law and ensures that justice is delivered. The government is working towards consistency and ensuring that uh, remote areas and islands in Fiji receive the same standard of professional services as provided in our major centers. Our justice system has been undergoing reforms, which include the revision of the laws of Fiji. On 9th December 2016, the revised uh, Consolidated Laws of Fiji was launched. This published uh, revision edition will now provide all Fijians access to the law in consolidated format after 30 years from the last edition in 1985. This uh, document is not only for the lawyers, but for all Fijians. It improves transparency and promotes accountability of public officers and most important, provides clarity of the status of the law in Fiji. Knowing and understanding our laws is very important to the lives of every citizen in Fiji. In Fiji today, there are increased cases of unlawful offenses which range from criminal offenses, abuses, domestic violence, land issues, and the list goes on. Yet at the same time, there are also extents of ignorance on the part of citizens to know and be thoroughly informed of the relevant laws that would enable them to know appropriate actions or legal processes that they can follow when they encounter certain situations. In this regard, I encourage you all to try and make an effort to access and be acquainted with the relevant laws that you can refer to in situations you encounter. On our news headlines, we continue to face uh, unacceptable levels of abuse and rape. Last year, I stood in front of the world leaders at the World Humanitarian Summit in Turkey. I pointed out that far too many regard women as subservient and possessions for the sexual gratification and far too many men routinely resort to violence in a domestic setting. I simply do not accept the pro uh, proposition that the onus is on the woman not to provoke a partner. Let me therefore reiterate government's position that there is no justification, no excuse for any man to inflict violence on a woman or abuse her in any way. Those who do so are cowards and criminals. Children in the same way are victims of violence and abuse. The case, uh, cases of child sexual abuse in Fiji are a shame. 
statistics shows that 80% of child sexual abuse cases, the offender is a member of the child's immediate family or someone the child knows and trusts. We need to protect our children and neither is there an excuse for child sexual abuse nor any tolerance on the brunt of the law. To all Tabiuni court staff, the government has done its part with the improvements to the courts. Therefore, members of the public should be served in an efficient, effective, and dignified manner. Service to the public must be raised to meet a world-class standard. Be reminded that your mission is to ensure judicial system that is accessible, efficient, effective, and transparent. To the members of the public, I say, the court facilities are here to provide a service, not only for court hearings and other judicial services, but also for seeking appropriate legal advice as and when required. It is your court, and you must have confidence when making inquiries and raising other matters with our court staff at Tabuni. The current court facility now has a waiting area, a convenience cell block, more rooms for court staff, and a world-class courtroom, and I understand it includes fans. <laughs> the audio recording system will ensure that judgments are properly transcribed in a timely manner. The internet connection will connect the Tabuni court to the rest of the world with a click of a button. The days of waiting outside under the scorching sun or rain are now over. To conclude, I am confident that the modernized magistrate court housed in Tabuni will raise the legal uh, level of legal services provided to the people. It is now my pleasure to officially open the Tabuni magistrate courthouse. Thank you, Minagabo Lebu, and God bless you all. Before.